We'll move on now um, to Chris Fitzgerald, who's joining us from Laley. Um, he is the area sales manager in Victoria, so for Laley Australia. So um, he'll give us a presentation now. And I believe you've got um, some, some slides to share, Chris. Yeah, I'll just share my screen now. Yep. Is that coming across? Yep, that's come through. Just go to, oh, it's um, dropped off again. Yep, and then um, if you just go to the slideshow um, button down the bottom, or um, you can go from, from beginning up in the top. From beginning. Yeah, uh, uh, just underneath file. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Firstly, thank you for inviting us. I thought it'd be a good opportunity just to start off with in regards to just give a bit of a brief background in regards to myself, just in regards to credibility and, and bits and pieces. So just briefly, because I know we're pushing for time um, and I think um, Brett and Bill for their presentation just before, but I come from a, a, a family dairy background, grew up in Merrigan worked on several dairy farms, done a stint as a dairy technician and moved down to the Western District in 2012 to um, manage a GEA um, owned dealership. So I had a team of dairy technicians and most recently I've actually managed a, a GEA uh, dealership for Tranga District Cup and um, had up to eight dairy technicians building new dairies and servicing the district um, down here in the Western and surrounding districts. So, Sorry, Chris, um, can I just jump in for a sec? Yep. Um, are you using two screens, are you? Uh, you're not seeing it? No, we're still seeing the um, w when you're in the editable view. Sorry. Can I, if I press, how do I do that? Um, the, well, the screen we're seeing is the, the open PowerPoint file. Um, you've got the full screen view on your other screen, have you? Yes, that's it. That's come through now. There you go, is that it? Perfect, yep, thank you. Sorry, you can see that now, sorry. Um, so just as I touched on, so previously been in the recently just been servicing new dairies, um, building new dairies and um, running a team of up to eight dairy technicians down here in the Southwest District. But today, obviously, Terry and um, Nick have invited us in regards to just to touch on in regards to the adoption of AMS within Australia and New Zealand. Um, so that's our main focus today. I'm not going to elaborate too much. Everyone knows in regards to what our challenges are in the dairy industry. But uh, the interesting thing in a lot of surveys that are coming through is the same same things. Um, so in 2018, 90% um, of dairy farmers of, uh, are still family owned and operated with a variable level of external labour. Um, so like most of us, or sorry, I shouldn't say oh, most of us, that. We're obviously reliant on external labour, being either local backpackers, bits and pieces, but and obviously we're we're challenged with it in regards to the availability of skilled labour, um, with the demands of um, of animal management, and uh, and two two key variables um, have been identified, um, which obviously around that skilled labour and all that stuff that are limiting in regards to our production and profitability. Um, a lot of facilities, as we all know, um, uh, were built probably in the vicinity over 10 years and coming to age. So we're actually seeing a lot of them deteriorate and need to be fixed, which is obviously putting a lot of pressure on farms and individuals and obviously looking outside to actually, um, to actually build new dairies um, and looking at what technologies they're taking on. The interesting thing back in 2018 also, which is no, no news to us, is in regards to that 78% had two or more people involved in part of the milking process. And um, 
with uh, some of the farms actually remain of the farm having up to three or more. So again, it's nothing new, but it's interesting to see how this all sort of reflects on. One thing that we look at um, both in Laley or in that is in regards to the market segments and just generally how we sort of classify some of our, our clientele and customers and bits and pieces. And this, this innovative adoption cycle here, which has um, come from New Zealand is in regards to the uh, acceleration of uh, innovation, um, which has been a result of COVID, but it still reflects in regards to the way we sort of uh, see the adoption of innovation, um, even in the current circumstances or within the dairy industry. So um, the early innovators or visionaries are obviously proactively in regards to seeking information and, and general knowledge and, and generally equipped to, equipped to adopt a technology. Um, convenience seekers, which are the early adopters, are looking for balance between their work on and on farm and other activities within their lives and generally defined as young dairy farmers and next generations. The business optimizers are generally focused on optimizing the farm and earning money. Larger farms with several, in, generally larger farms with several employees and entrepreneurial farmers. And then we have the traditionals, which are generally conservative and sort of step back and sort of um, and just watch in regards to changes taking place and take small steps and control those things and bits and pieces. So that's just a bit of an overview of there. But the interesting thing is that I sort of wanted to sort of elaborate on that was in regards to where we sort of think the Australian industry is, dairy industry is in that current cycle in terms of AMS. So in one of Nico's recent things, he's mentioned in regards to this 5,200 dairy farmers in Australia, of which about 50 have invested in AMS at the moment. So it's about 1% of the dairy farmers within Australia. Um, just to recap, the, the first automatic milking system was in 2021. So obviously it's been it's 20 years since the first uh, adoption, but we didn't see the second one sort of take on um, until about 2008. So based on the current percentages of adoption, we'd nearly say that within the current market, we're still within the innovative stage. But what we're probably seeing is probably a little bit later than that in regards to that we're probably actually transitioning through to the early adopter stage. And what's actually reflecting of that and what we've actually seen, and we're actually seeing a large increase of the convenience seekers and business optimizers sort of inquiries coming through and actually adopting and taking on the technology. And so within the convenience seekers, we're actually seeing um, people looking um, to change around lifestyle and family activity. So a little bit more flexibility. Um, they're generally more family orientated. So they want, that's like Bill touched on, they want to be able to have the flexibility to agree um, to take the kids to the bus stop and, and um, attend the swimming and bits and pieces. So they're changing the sort of the management styles and things around their systems. And one of those systems being obviously AMS as they adopted on. Um, as we all know, and doesn't matter whether it's a conventional system or, or AMS or, or any industry in general in agriculture, we're all struggling in regards to meet the labour requirements. But a lot of people that we're talking to are actually getting tired and, and um, need a break. So they're working long hours because of lack of labour requirements and all that stuff. Um, and they're getting really tired. So they're, they're looking for lifestyle changes so they can have more family activities and take a break. Um, the business optimizers that we're seeing come through um, are more looking around to optimize produ production and change in the shifts, shifts, shifts um, in, their, in their production systems in terms of TMR, PMR, um, uh, hybrid systems, um, some of the transition away from pasture to pack barns and compost. We're seeing that hybrid system, but they're also looking to take their business to the next level. So they're already maximised productivity to the in their current systems. So they're looking at trying to increase that productivity where possible, and they're looking outside of their current systems to sort of look and achieve that. The interesting thing that we're also seeing, um, which is driving the level of inquiry 
is obviously the changes in um, geographic regions. And we're, and we're seeing um, not necessarily a one fits all model. Um, the geographic regions are actually um, dictating in regards to the sort of systems, whether it be TMR, PMR, hybrid, pasture-based systems. So we're sort of seeing that um, uh, being driven in different districts, um, which is sort of pushing probably Northern Victoria um, inquiries probably a little bit more because they're potentially in South Australia, I should say, sort of looking towards that more barn housed systems um, or a hybrid of the two. And obviously the aging infrastructure is a big um, influ influ influence in the whole thing. So in regards to adoption of Laylee systems, I thought I'd just briefly just touch on as of current, the, the uptake of um, our, our systems um, across Australia and New Zealand, we've actually operating farms of 44, which is made up of about 208 Laylee robots have adopted our systems. And that make up at the moment is 41 grazing based farms with our current biggest farm based on a pasture based system being 10 robots and a corporate farm. Uh, we have one hybrid barn farm, which is pasture and barn based system in New Zealand, which is six robots and a freestall uh, mixed system. And then we've got online two part, uh, barn based systems, one being in New Zealand, which is two individual barns with 16 robots in one and eight robots in the other. And obviously the new one that's come on recently in regards to compost barn being D's with the eight robots. Uh, coming on board probably in the next X amount of months and um, in, pushing into 2022, obviously we've had Nagita, Nagita um, Farms, the Connors just come online being commissioned by Brett at the Laylee team and bits and pieces um, assisting them um, with the, the startup in the last week. So they've put in six A5 robots coming on board and currently being installed. We've got another Laylee XL farm of eight robots in Gippsland and, commit, and, and then with three grazeways. We've got a three robot farm, sorry, three farms in Gippsland coming on board as well. One of them being five A5s, another five A5s and two A5s. So another three, three coming in Gippsland to look out for. Northern Victoria, if you've been following me on Facebook and social media, we've just um, signed up an XL farm. We've got eight A5 robots with three grazeways with a mixture of TMR and um, pasture coming on board. That'll be commissioned in regards to around June 2022. Tasmania, we've seen another farm going with five A5s. And New Zealand, we've got a new XL farm coming on board too with another eight robots. So it's plenty of um, activity happening on in terms of um, Laylee farms and equipment. So overall, so far in the pipeline, we've got about 80, uh, sorry, 47 robots coming on board. Um, to support all that, um, look, we've got an extensive network of Laylee centres across Australia and New Zealand, all comprising of all their dedicated team, which is made up of sales, SMS support and technical support. Um, and to support those, we've actually got 20, 23 dedicated um, direct employed Laylee staff uh, situated across Australia and New Zealand. Um, and obviously Laylee being, we're a dedicated AMS team who are trained and focused on the future of farming with an AMS system. And we're just solely concentrated, our key focuses on our business are around milking, feeding and manure handling in regards to automation. So we don't concentrate on any um, conventional systems and bits and pieces. Our whole focus is in regards to our main business is AMS. Um, as I touched on, we've got a dedicated farm management support group, which uh, support team, which works across uh, direct with farmers and our Laylee centres, both on farm with farmer and supporting the Laylee centres and the technical support staff based across uh, Australia and New Zealand, which offer support to the Laylee centres and, and directly there as well. So the makeup of our 23 directly staff, just to touch on our, our main key staff, obviously myself um, and, and our sales team are made up of four customer solutions team. Um, 
as part of our sales roles, we assist both Laley centres and bits and pieces um, in regards to individual new and retrofit designs. We assist with the farm grazing layouts and designs, and we assist with the customer solutions in regards to barn designs, layouts, cow flow, and bits and pieces as well. So a good support tool there. Um, Brett Good, which is a former manager of one of the commercial Laley farms, is now come on board, which brings a, a wealth of knowledge and technical uh, knowledge, both hands-on um, and lots of stuff. So Brett's come on as a commercial product specialist to support, support us in our sales role um, we, and just has a key of knowledge there. Um, to support us also, we've got a dedicated project coordination team. So assists in a handover in regards to once we moved and transitioned through to the um, installation of the systems. Um, also, we've got, which is a key of, if, uh, of our, all of our business is in regards to our farm management support team. So we've got a farm management support team which literally guide our customers before, during and, and after startup with the auto, automated milking and feeding. Um, so it's a, it's a key part of it all in regards to that support. They also assist throughout with all the cow, um, the work and management related issues, ongoing support and relationship there. And they work in regards to help them optimise um, the farm um, and bits and pieces like that. We've got a dedicated technical service uh, support team, which I've touched on be before, and obviously warehouse marketing and bits and pieces. Touched on before in regards to our Laley centres. Um, in Australia, we've got seven um, Laley centres. We've got two service centres and coming on board um, to be confirmed, we've got some new service centres um, coming up uh, within some key support areas, both around the country in bits and pieces. As we've got more um, uh, AMS farms coming on board, um, it's driving um, certain key areas. So we're putting in um, dedicated service centres and support centres in regards to assist our clients and support them further there. And obviously that spreads across New Zealand in regards to five Laley centres. How are we going, Tori? Go a couple more minutes. Yeah, cool. Um, look, I didn't know how, obviously I've pushed through it quite quickly, um, being mindful of time, but I, I suppose I just want to touch on that Laley itself is always um, is always looking at new products and continually evolving and 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 looking at technology in bits and pieces. So um, we've got uh, the Discovery coming on board, which is a Discovery collector, which uh, looks to be hitting Australia within 2022. And the one that's really catching a lot of attention is obviously the Vector automated feeding, um, which is looked to hit Australia in 2023. So there's a couple of exciting new products there. Obviously with the new rollout of Horizon 2, um, with that uh, rolling out in Australia, uh, both now and into the new year, or whatever, um, puts more technology at the fingertips and puts more people in control as well sort of thing. So there's a lot of exciting things coming on board, but the exciting thing at the moment in regards to the amount of inquiry and the amount of adoption we're seeing in regards to customers taking on our FM, uh, sorry, AMS in Australia, which is quite exciting. So yeah, that wraps it, wraps it up about for me, I think. Thanks, Chris. Um, thank you for, for spending the time to join us today and for sharing all those insights from um, Laylee perspective.